Hello, this is Jay from Encodian. So today we're going to have a look at our new Git image information action and uh, exactly as it says on the tin, so to speak, this action will provide information about the image which you provide to the action. So real simple uh, flow here, we're saying when a file is created in a folder, um, go and get the information about this image. So really simple, just pass the file content property to the file content property of the uh, Git image information action and that will do what you need it to do. In terms of the image that get uh, sort of the information that is returned by this action, well, let's have a quick look at the support portal. And you can see those are documented here. So image format, file size, width, height, DPI, exif data, so on and so forth. So in essence, what we can do now do with this, with this action is perform conditional logic based on information about the image. So let's do some quick examples. Let's add a condition to this flow. And we're going to say uh, when the file or the width of this particular action uh, is greater than 3000, then do something with uh, this particular image file. I should have noted when I went onto the support portal, this at the moment, uh, which we're in March 22, uh, 28th, and whilst we've deployed our action globally, Microsoft are currently rolling this out across all Power Automate regions. So some of you may already have it. Some of you will see this action become available uh, across April. So we would expect this to be concluded by mid-April by Microsoft, and then everybody will have full access. And at that point, we'll remove this note from the support portal. But if you can't see it, that's why. But you shouldn't be waiting too much longer. Uh, right, so let's go back to this flow. So we've got when a file has been created in SharePoint, go and get the information about the image. If the width is greater than 3000, then we would like to resize the image. So let's just do resize an image. A um, little bit of a, a trick here. Um, you'll notice I'm using the when a file is created in a folder, and that's because I'm going to do an update on the file uh, which is uh, triggered the flow. Now, if I used a, uh, a trigger action which was being triggered when the file is created and updated, I would end up in a recursive flow because I'm going to update it, which would re-trigger the flow, and it would just run in a complete circle. So I've used this particular action because this trigger action because it's only firing when a file is created. However, the trigger has got um, some interesting uh, properties. Um, or features, should we say? So you'll see here that the property name, that the property for file name is XMS file name encoded, which is exactly what it says is an encoded value. Now I could decode it with an expression, but all I'm going to simply do, so I can get access to the file name, is I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to pop it into Notepad. Um, and what that enables me to do is I can simply take off the hyphen encoded element of that that value. So I'm just going to take off this bit, which means I'm just going to get the file name back, which is all I want. So there we go. Bit of a hack, but um, that will work. You wouldn't typically need to do that. Well, you wouldn't need to do that unless unless you're using this particular trigger. Um, if you've got any other trigger, just obviously make sure you're passing the full file name in with extension. Right, file content, resize and image is the file content from the trigger. Great. Resize type is percentage. We're going to say 30% and the last thing we need to do is update the file so we're going to use the same location so our SPO demo site and we're going to pass the identifier from the trigger so the, this is the file that triggered it and now we're going to pass the resize and image file content so uh, really simple when the file gets uploaded into SharePoint, let's go and get the information about the image. If it's bigger than 3,000 pixels, sorry, not bigger. If it's wider than 3,000 pixels, do a resize and update the source file. So let's let's just fire this through now. So I'm going to pull up a file and drag it in. So bear with me a moment while I find a suitable image. I could have been quicker with this, couldn't I? Tip, which I have. Right, so I'm going to pop in a file. It's about 7.5 meg, so it's a fairly large, a large image that's going to, um, uh, it's going to drive this flow. Um, well, here we go. Curse of the demo. I've not put this into test, have I? So let's just delete this, so we can re-trigger it. And let's put this into a test scenario. So we're going to manually trigger it. We'll redrop that file back in when Power Automate is ready.
here we go. It took a while to get there, but here we are. So let's just re-upload this file again, which is going to fire that trigger. And here we go. So that's firing. So SharePoint trigger's been, been fired. We're going to get the image information about the image, I should say, and then that's going to trigger the resize action. Well, assuming that is that the image that we've uh, that we've shared has got width that's bigger than 3,000 pixels. So let's have a look. Yeah, so 7.55 meg, and you'll see that it's 3328 in terms of pixels. If I have a look in here, actually, and I'll just refresh this, we should see... Ah, so that's been updated a few... Ah, so that's already executed. So I can see now the file size is 164K. So let's just go down here. We can see that the original source file from was 7.5 meg. Yeah, was greater than 3,000 pixels. So that would have gone down to here into the condition, evaluated true, we've resized the image. So you can see now uh, that that's executed correctly. Um, obviously, going from 8 meg down to 164K is, is quite significant. Uh, and that's simply because as well as doing the resize, an image action will also do compression and other good stuff to reduce the file sizes, but it will maintain the quality of the image. But the dimensions of that image would have just been cut down by 30%. So there's some other interesting things we can do. We could also do things like checking for EXIF data. So let's just type in here, EXIF data. Let's say, does the image have EXIF data? Uh, so that would be is equal to true then we could use the new uh, remove EXIF data action, which again, this has been rolled out with the get image information action, I should add. So let's go into get, uh, I'm going to have to go onto our custom connector, which I know can see because uh, at the moment this isn't, isn't available, as I said a few moments ago, but we have deployed it. So we've got a custom connector pointed at our prod infrastructure so we can test these things. So we've got file content, so again, we just need to pass in the actual file. For brevity, I know it's coming as a JPEG, so I'll just select that. And I'm going to pass in the file content uh, from the encoding action. So now, very quickly, we've updated this flow. We're saying when an image is, is added, if it contains EXIF data, remove that EXIF data, update the source file in SharePoint. So again, we can let's just save this this time, and we'll go in to do a, a test. And we'll trigger it manually again, just because it fires much more quickly when we do it that way. I managed to remember to do it this time at least. Right, so let's go over to our, our SharePoint library. And I'm going to drop in a file this time, which I know has got some EXIF data, because it was taken on a camera phone, which would always generate EXIF data. And that's going to run through. So again, the, the SharePoint trigger executes. Information is obtained about the image. And if we go down here, oh, that's obviously a file that I've just passed in that doesn't have any information EXIF tag data. So let's just have a quick look at that. Or have I made a, a, a logic error in my flow, which is also always possible. So it does contain EXIF data. So I've clearly made an, an omission in my flow. So what did I do? EXIF data is equal to true. So that just looks like, ah. So I, <laughs> I've not used the correct property. I've said the EXIF data JSON is equal to true, but what I should have done was has EXIF data is equal to true. So apologies, that's my fault. So we can just rerun that using the recent trigger. And this time it will run successfully. So apologies for that. So one thing to notice about EXIF data, we, we do return and expose that information as well within the action. So if I look at that, you can see now that that's gone down the correct route because I've configured the condition correctly. Um, so again, images come in, we've checked it, it does contain EXIF data, we've taken those EXIF tags off the image and re-updated the file, that's brilliant. But um, just looking at that data, if you ever need to get to it, we return the EXIF data in a property called EXIF data JSON, and we return it as a JSON string. We've simply done this because there are so many properties that come back that form those EXIF tags that we wanted to make it a little bit simpler to actually read and access the data that you're probably going to work with more often. So file sizes, width, heights, DPI, that sort of thing. If you do want to work with the EXIF data, it's really easy. All you've got to do, um, and you'll have noticed I copy and pasted that, that example string there. All we're going to do is we're going to parse it. So let's just pop in here and we'll just go parse JSON. And let's say we want to do something with that data. Parse JSON. Uh, we're going to pass in 
the exif string, the JSON string, uh, exif data JSON, the schema. I'm going to generate it from the sample, which is why I copy and pasted that information. There we go. Done. And there's my schema. Now, if I was in update file and I wanted to do something with that, that I can see all of that data that's being exposed. Now, what you will notice is that a lot of that is just string properties and there are a load of things in there which are integers and Power Automate won't show you those by default. But what we can do is we can use the string expression in Power Automate and then when we go back, you'll see many more properties available. So the aperture, um, bits per pixel. So anything that was actually an integer um, will also be available then and you can see a huge amount of information that's available to there if you need to use that exif data for any particular reason. So uh, let's round things off uh, as we've just come to the 11 minute mark. So get image information will return you lots of useful information about an image. We've had a quick look at the exif tag uh, or remove exif tags from image action as well which can be used to do exactly what it says which is remove those exif tags. Um, as ever, if you have any problems with any of the encoding actions, then email us at supportencoding.com or go to support portal, which is support.encoding.com. And if you've got any general Power Automate um, queries, questions, then we would highly recommend checking out the Power Automate community.